Hey, Coach, we've got a fantastic guest with us tonight. Lee Webb is the defensive coordinator at South Johnson High School in North Carolina. He's been the D coordinator there for four years. Before that, he was a uh, middle school head coach, and, and Lee uh, – Lee took uh, did a did a worst to first deal with his with his middle school team, and uh, he's also a former player of mine. So I'm I'm excited to see uh, his growth, and uh, and he's a hot up and comer now. He's a, a a big league D coordinator and gonna be a head coach very soon. Uh, only drawback is he's a very below average fisherman, but other than that, he is uh, he is thumbs up all the way around. He's going to talk to us today, and I'm actually, I'm really excited about seeing this, uh, Lee. He's going to, the drill he's going to teach us today is called Alley Press, and it's an outside run drill that uh, that he really likes and has really impacted their defense. So uh, so I'm sure we're going to all be stealing it from you. So, Lee, thanks for being on this thing, man, and, uh, and we're excited to learn from you, buddy. Good to be here. You also forgot to tell him about how uh, whenever you start fishing, you tend to get sick a little bit, you know, throwing up off the edge of the boat and being able to fish. I'm, I'm sure those are like uh, my, <laughs> uh, my name's Lee Webb. Um, I'm a South Johnson graduate 2007. I've uh, graduated from Barton College in 2013. I've been coaching since 2008. Took one year off in between. Um, I added up a few minutes ago. I think it's 12 years. Uh, I coached under Coach I played under Coach Siles for three years. I, play, I coached under him for three years. Um, and, you know, it was a blessing to do that. And then I was able to get my own middle school job and eventually came back home to where I graduated from. I was able to – first year there, I was a defensive backs coach. Um, the following year, our uh, head coach, he took over the offense and he promoted me to defense and uh, that's what we've been doing ever since. Um, I am married. I have a child, a little girl, two years old named Jolie. Uh, she, we are expecting our second child at the end of January. So, you know, football season being pushed back most of the time, you know, Jolie was born at the end of October. So it's right there in football season, right there at playoffs. Now, other than we born, we planned on it being at a football season, but now football season is starting. We had, she's coming during football season, so it's good that you know, you we your, can't uh, get away. It's good that you used your COVID quarantine time effectively. <laughs> Definitely, you know, we tried timing it up out of uh, out of football season, but we somehow always put it, get it done during football season. So. <laughs> but. Uh, no, what I wanted to talk with you guys today about uh, was a drill. Our head coach, when he was a defense coordinator, uh, my first year, he did. He introduced me to this drill, and I just thought it was a great drill, and it's something I use. I was telling Coach South earlier that I use it at least three times a week. Um, you know, it's great for teaching run fits. You know, whether you run. A three four like we do, a four three, four two five, three three stack, uh, whatever defense it is, you know, it's just a great drill that you can do. That um also, you know, during this COVID situation that we're in, you know, wherever you may be, we're not allowed to we can touch a ball, but it has to be in our only pod. Um, so this has been a great drill for us. We basically ran it. We just got done. We were off this week. We practiced for five weeks straight. And, you know, our guys, by the end of this, end of the five weeks, they were ready to hit something. And, you know, can't blame them because you're sitting there telling them to hold up, stop, don't don't hit it, don't hit them. But, you know, it's a great drill to teach run fits. It, it kind of teaches them, you know, a little more about football. It teaches them what a force player is, what an alley player is, what a skill player is. And it teaches, it gives them knowledge. And, uh, you know, I can go to our players right now and, you know, safeties, they'll tell you, uh, if I ask them, what are you on, what are you doing if the run comes your way? I'm force coach or I'm alley, you know. So it, it's a great teaching tool for them to kind of understand the game a little bit more. Um, let's go to the second slide. If I can get it. Um, so basically, you know, you run this with any defense, but I'm just going to kind of go over our defense real quick. 
during our alley press drill, our primary responsibilities, you know, our outside linebackers are C, D, or C and D gap players. You know, we keep them as skilled players. We try to keep them, you know, close to the box, right there on the umbrella, if you know what I'm talking about with the umbrella principle, on that line, because we still want them to be skilled players. Um, our backside, outside linebacker, he's our BCR guy. Our inside linebackers are reading the guards and they're working off their blocks. And our backside safety, if runs away, he's our alley player. Um, that to us is, is simple because safeties know if, you know, alley, if ball's two, we're forced. If ball's away, we're alley. Um, now it can, we can get into change ups that we do. You know, we have, we, you know, you can progress this drill however how you want to. Um, Depending on, you know, our secondary responsibilities, you know, our outside linebackers may be force, and they'll signal that to the uh, inside linebackers and safeties if we got a DN that's slanting the C gap. So now they become force players. Um, and what that does when they signal that they're force, the play side safety is then now he becomes the alley player on the front side since the play side outside linebacker is the force guy. Um, inside linebackers doing the same thing. They're reading and working off their blocks. Um, and at the bottom, again, reiterating, outside linebacker signals he's force, then the safety becomes the alley. Um, we use this drill for, you know, you can use this drill for a lot of different things. Uh, you can use it for jet, outside zone, uh, but we play a few wing T teams that I like using this drill a lot for. Um, load option and triple. Um, when we actually do triple, we don't play a team this year that has been triple, but in the past, uh, we would add our defensive ends in there so that way they, they could work in that blocking scheme too, and that gave our nose guards and defensive tackles more time to work with a D-line coach. And uh, it just it was just better for us. So the first thing I would say is just start simple. Um, what we do – we lay out four cones across. Uh, you know, the first cone would be our secondary for or our secondary force. Second cone is our force. Our third cone nearest the ball is our alley. And our last cone nearest the ball is our spill. And the way we work this, we work it half line. So what I'll do, I'll be back here somewhere. And this side will go, and the safeties get plenty of work doing this because they're constantly having to go back and forth. Um, and luckily, we do have a few safeties we can rotate. So as soon as they're done, if we go the other way, the other safety will jump in and take his spot so he's not having to do it the whole time. But we'll do half line, and so that way we can see it better. We can see our players. You know, it helps the players see it better without everyone else running to the ball. Um, and then as soon as they get done, then I'll switch to the other side, and the other side will go. And it's almost – we add we do this primarily, you know, we do have our own pursuit drill, but this is also a great way for them to pursue. Um, and especially if you're going quick constantly and in upbeat tempo. Uh, so what will happen is we'll have a ball carrier. I'll be behind – you know, we have barrels up. I'll be behind the uh, center barrel, and I'll just – give a signal in the ball carrier, he'll start running straight down the line of scrimmage or straight down the line. He won't turn up. He won't do anything. He'll just run straight to the sideline. These guys will give a pass run call. The guys that are not in and doing anything, you know, like your sideline, as soon as they hear run, safety's corners, they're in their back pedal. They're getting to their spots. Corners getting, he's getting to the sideline. His first priority is protect the sideline and work everything back outside in. Um, our play side safety, he's our force player, so he's getting to our second cone. Our backside safety, he's our alley player, he's getting to our third cone. And our play side inside linebacker and outside linebacker is our spill player. Um, and basically what they do, they get to their spots, they're running feet, they hear a whistle, then they jog off, next group comes on, and then I'm going to the other side. So it's a quick drill to get them going. Um, have you got any questions, Coach? No, I love it. Keep going. Um, so, you know, uh, I was telling Coach earlier before we got on here, I know you probably can't see 
But what we did, you know, I would take since we're unable to actually, you know, hit or be live. So during my indie time, since I'm the DB coach, uh, we what we would do we we work on the force player. I would have a bag here, and I'd put the ball on top of the bag, you know. And if the two uh, safeties that were in and our corners rotated safety too, you know, they put they can play any position. Um, our safety, as soon as he would hear run during our indie time, he'd come up. Backside safety would fill the alley. He'd make the tackle off the dummy. And our second safety in the alley would scoop and score. Um, that was a good takeaway drill for us that we like to do during, especially this COVID crazy season that we're having. Um, once you have done that, you know, you can get into doing running against Jet. You can add in receivers, you know, add in. So what we'll usually do if we're going against a, a big Jet team, you know, if they're running, that's their top three, one of their top three run plays. Um, you know, whether they like running Jet to the three receiver side or two receiver side, we'll line it up that way and just work it. Uh, you know, and I, what I like to do, I want to put my guys in a situation to where they have to be the block. You know, to me, practice is not is not a time for them to make. It's not it's not a feel good thing. It's to make them be better, and they got to understand that. You know, so they're going to get blocked, and they got to beat blocks. And our guys know that if they get beat on a block, and you know, during this drill, you know, three quick push ups, and you know, we don't want to punish them too much. But we don't. We want them just. To, it's just a. a uh, we. It's just something a reminder, you know. Get off the block. Beat the block. Use what you're told during the indie the beat blocks. So, what you see here, we got our uh, two by two set here, and we'll just have you know another DB that's not in or a linebacker that's not in. You know, he'll say set, and this guy will come in motion. He'll hand the ball off, and he's jet um the linebackers they're working on seeing the crack blocks beating the crack blocks um you know corners or safeties you know this h we could easily have this h on the next place stalk the safety and stalk the corner or we can have the x crack the safety crack him you know just kind of giving them different looks so that way they can see different things coming at them and making them, putting them in a situation where they have to beat, you know, uh, block to make a tackle. Because um, I've heard this for a long time. If you make a tackle and you didn't get blocked, you know, that's not nothing to celebrate. If you celebrate whenever you are actually getting blocked and make a tackle. Um, so this is just what it looks like with Jet, um, you know, We'll have a pit. I want to put at least three bodies on our three bodies. Um, you know, this guy's got a long ways to go. I want him, if these three guys are getting blocked, the outside linebacker, the safety in the corner, and these two guys are what we're depending on, I, they, those two better make the play. Um, these two guys better not get blocked, or, again, they got three push-ups. <laughs> uh, about how much time do you give this period every day? I give it between 10 minutes, um, and usually it can cut down. Like on Monday when we're introducing it, you know, if we're doing if we're going against a jet team or, you know, outside zone team, you know, we'll kind of walk through it the first two or three minutes, and then we'll start rolling. Then on the next day, we may only do it five minutes. But we're constantly doing it, and the way, the way we set up our schedules as far as practicing, you know, we'll – as – I'll meet with the linebacker coach and the D-line coach, and, you know, we'll talk about – we got our everyday drills that we do, but we'll talk about what we need to focus on as far as, you know, for top three run plays or jet, inside zone, and and dark. You know, we, we got blocking schemes that they need to work on how to beat, recognizing crack blocks. Uh, outside linebackers need to know, recognize a crack block, and beating crack blocks, safeties need to be able to, you know, if they're seeing a receiver cross their face and their eyes on the quarterback, they need to recognize that and help the linebacker and say crack and then replace. Um, so usually about 10 minutes the first day, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, 
Uh, Tuesday, I may schedule it 10 minutes again, but by Wednesday, we're usually doing it five minutes because we can get it in and out. And then we'll actually go into our inside run period stuff where we add in, you know, inside run and outside runs together. Good deal. Um, you know, again, right here is just another look that we throw at them. You know, the eight stalking, stalking the uh, safety, you know, the guard. We'll actually, so what we'll actually do is we'll take a linebacker or DB that's not in, and, you know, and the, if these two things are our barrels, we'll put them in between and actually have them pull them, you know, and getting their hands on them. You know, we haven't been able to do that this year, but in the past, that's what we've done. Um, you know, trying to get them in the way and have, making them have to be the block. Um, so basically, one of the last ones I want to show you was uh, the wing T teams we play. You know, a lot of their their favorite plays are uh, Buck. So, you know. The way we set this up, if you notice, the cones are closer together because, you know, Buck's trying – is pushing C, trying to stay inside of C and D gap. So we put the cones a little bit closer and make everything have to work off. Um, so for us, what we do whenever we have no receivers on one side, we just flip our safety in our corner because most of the time our safeties are like our linebacker body types and our corners are our pretty boys you like to cover. So we'll walk our safety up. And, uh, you know, this is something we do during any time. You know, we work on being the force player, taking on the block, setting the edge. And we have him being the coming in, being the force, and the backside safety coming in to be the alley. And when we add it all together and we do this, we'll have – we'll actually pull uh, – let's see here. When we do it together – once we've done it off of cones like we did the first time, we'll have them run to their cones, stop, then we'll go through that uh, for about five minutes. And then the next five minutes, we'll take the cones away and we're just running butt right at them. So again, we'll take our linebackers or any DBs we have left, put them in these guard spots and tell them who they're blocking and, you know, make our guys have to be the block. Uh, so that's how we usually do it on buck. Um, our safety here, he's the force guy. Our other corner, he's, he's still a force. Our safety here on Buck, he's our alley. And then we got our spill, he's down, he's reading that down block. And then it's almost like a hoop drill. He's trying to get around under that uh, wing that's trying to arc, the arc him. And he's trying to spill it out to the sideline. He's reading our outside linebacker, inside linebacker's reading pool. So he's stacking in, trying to get over the top of that block and also be a skill player in behind that outside linebacker. But, you know, that's just something simple that we do. You know, you can add a lot of stuff to this. You know, like I was mentioning that before, you know, outside zone, you can add a guard for pin and pulling. Um, load option, some people use guard to pull on load option. You can add those in there. Um, but what I will say, the reason I love this drill is because, one, it teaches our players their run fits. But the main reason is because I can make it harder for our guys. And, you know, we've got to – we're in a position now as a team and as a coaching staff that our guys won't – they don't want anything handed to you. So they want those guys in there trying to block. They won't have to be blocked. Um, you know, so it's fun to see them in this drill. Um, I enjoy it. This is probably one of my favorite drills that we do. I, you know, I'm a DB coach, so I'm supposed to like uh, Skelly. But, you know, in high school, I was offensive line, but somehow I became a DB coach. I don't know how that happened. But, uh, you know, I love being able to stop the run. I love for people to say, you know, about our team that, you know, it's going to be hard. We're going to have to pass on them if we want to do that. Um, and I think this drill does a great job at being a run-stopping team. Um, yeah, I love it, man. I uh, I can see I can see where number one is a great teaching deal because it's half line, 
and then I, I see what you're talking about where you can add more pieces until it's almost like a, a, a highly uh, specific inside run period to stop their best stuff. So uh, great job, man. I'm going to steal it from you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate you coming on here, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.